When you think of 90s video game television shows, it's likely that Games Master and Dominic Diamond will spring to mind. It wasn't the only example of its genre, however, with literally hundreds of such programs littering both terrestrial and satellite television schedules over the course of the decade. There was the cutting edge Bad Influence, featuring the many hairstyles of Violet Berlin, Head to Head, and of course the ever popular Games World, from the same people that brought you Dave Perry's bandana and Patrick Moore's bulbous floating head. Toby is having trouble with that Koopa paratrooper. He, he got very, very lucky there. I thought he was a But then you had Super Mario Challenge, a tea time Mazza bash up broadcast on cable and satellite station, the Children's Channel, or just TCC for short. Erd mere months after the European release of Super Mario Bros. 3, you could say it represented the UK's own attempt to profit from the Mario fad at a time when the console market was just starting to take off. Games like Super Mario Bros., a battle to rescue the Mushroom Princess from the evil Koopa Turtles. But that would be a rather cynical suggestion beyond the grasp of a five year old kid, so it's something of a moot point. Presented by part-time Beatle and David Copperfield wannabe John Lenehan, um, I mean Super Mario himself, the show featured a Mario-themed set constructed from balsa wood and leftover cardboard cutouts from a Cadbury's dairy milk advert. Though quite small, the studio featured a massive projection television. At least, it doesn't look like a cathode ray tube telly, and I think a flat screen would have been beyond the budget of a show that couldn't even afford proper cheers. Toby has 43,000, whereas Mark only has 23,000. There is a minute left, guys! A Competitors would go head to head in a number of Super Mario Bros. challenges, including a simple race to the end of a level and who could rack up the most points. The winner with a grand total of 39,610, yeah! Winners of each round would receive some rather satisfying polystyrene props painted to look like gold coins. And at the end, the contestant with the most coins would win the game. Round three. Three gold coins in the offering. This is the way the game should be played. Are you ready, Tobe? Yeah. You ready, Mark? Yeah. On your mark, get set, go! And they are off and running. In the early stages of the competition, aside from advancing to the next playoff round, there were no prizes as such, just the satisfaction of winning. I mean, who needs money or trophies when you can say that you've beaten Super Mario's Challenge? Who has the most gold coins? Besides, the parents of kids that went on the program are likely to have been absolutely loaded anyway, rich enough at least to buy them a Nintendo, so a Mario 1 cart wouldn't have made that great a prize. At least the challengers look happy, though I can't really say the same for the audience. Most of the time they just slob about or sit there staring blankly into the camera while Mario tries his best to inject some sort of passion into his delivery. Now let's be honest about this. As a kid you're only interested in watching the other people play Super Mario Brothers and chiming on about how much better you are than them. As an adult, however, you can see that it's John Lenehan that really makes the show interesting. Nah, we didn't really believe he was Super Mario, but his boundless excitement must have been a contributing factor to the show's moderate success. I only wish the studio audience could have shared in his enthusiasm. Pick up a life, you might end up with 4,000, maybe 5,000 points. What do you think of Toby's gameplay now that he stopped losing lives? Yeah, okay, that was good to hear. Sorry, uh, someone actually has killed all of our audience members, but there we are, Toby did finish! Maybe they're just overwhelmed by Lenehan's breathless running commentary on the action, which puts many radio football commentators to shame. Mark is zooming along here, make sure you pick up all the points you can there, Mark. Uh, there you go, Toby is using that kick and run technique. It is dangerous, because that shell comes back at you when it runs into something, but he handled it well. Toby and Mark are both little Marios. Mark is now going back, he's picked a one up. There is two and a half minutes left. It makes you wonder why he didn't feature in that many other shows, though I guess once you're typecast as Super Mario, film and television opportunities are going to be quite limited. 
If, like me, you weren't that good at Super Mario, there was an extra incentive to watch, in the form of the hints and tips segment, which would show you how to warp to World 8, or do the infinite lives trick in Super Mario 1. Yes, we'd read about how to do all this in Club Nintendo, but it's still nice to see them performed in moving video. Mostly, this section concluded with Mario boasting about how he never uses cheats because he's so good at games, but you have a sneaking suspicion that Lenehan still has trouble getting past the first Goomba. Earlier shows featured the original Super Mario Brothers more prominently. Though as the series progressed, we got to see action from Mario 2, and later still, Mario 3. I guess the premise was that, since these games were newer, they would provide more of a challenge as the competition neared its climax. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of those shows, nor do I know who eventually went on to win the contest outright. But, I'm sure he received a Mario game and watch, and the respect and admiration of his peers for years to come. Well done, Toad! Congratulations there! Woo. On your mark, get set, go! And they are off, Toby and Mark. Toby and Mark taking a while to start, but they have done it now. These days, the gaming contest TV show, like video games media in general, has moved largely to the internet. Now, we have all the head-to-head -head let's plays and commentaries that we want, thanks to YouTube and a generation brought up on console and computer video games. We can laugh all we like at the cheap costumes and studio setup of Super Mario Challenge, but it was all in the name of kids' television, and above all, it was an awful lot of harmless fun. If you showed it to an eight-year-old kid from the PS3 generation, they'd probably actually get some enjoyment out of it, because it's the type of cheese which seems to permeate the tea time teleschedule in 2011. The production values might have been a bit lower, but who cares? It's not like that many people watched it, tucked away on non-terrestrial telly as it was, so I doubt we'll be seeing the Super Mario Galaxy Challenge anytime soon. Right. Thank you a whole lot for being here. Thank you too for being such good players, such good stuff. Thank you in the audience for being so great. And make sure that you guys catch us next time on the Super Mario Challenge! Thank you in the audience for being so great. Thank you in the audience for being so great. Thank you in the audience for being so great.